Well, a big welcome back and thanks again for tuning in for last week's episode with Damo Kavka, an absolute star. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, head back and uh, watch that episode. We've got a bit of a football-related uh, situation happening on. We've got another ex-AFL footballer that was uh, that I'm good friends with, fortunately, Nathan Freeman, who went pick, I'm going to say 10. Pick 10, yeah. Yeah, in the 2013 National Draft and was plagued by his own journey with ups and downs, with injuries and whatnot, and then now he's onto something amazing with the breath house and stuff that we'll go into, and it's almost given him a new lease on life, I'd say, with what he's doing, and he's looking fitter than ever, which is weird because you're meant to be retired, but um, a massive, massive welcome to Big Bad Nath. Welcome through, mate. Mate, it's good to be here. We finally got me on, mate. mate I, this has been in the works for, for a while, eh? Oh, you've been teasing me. I've been, been um, I, I was meant to do it before I went to Greece, and then uh, obviously see, I thought, no, you know what, keep me for season two. I've got to say as well, before I start, a massive, massive thank you to our sponsors as well, because how can you forget our sponsors? They are the paying of, uh, that they pay for, for the for this amazing program, so I can't thank them enough. Bonza Snowballs, a huge thank you. Gigi Heron Kids, um, we've got uh, B&A Car and Truck Repairs. Uh, body, body contour and laser clinic and I feel like I'm forgetting one which is absolutely horrible of me but if I am I do apologize but a massive massive thank you uh, for jumping on board and coming oh how could I forget the best in the business the b- best barbecue catering b- I- I- that you could imagine barbecue catering brothers a massive thank you to Andrew and the team totally forgot but uh they're they're awesome Andrew he's great so you got a big party coming up are you 30 yet not 30 yet. Yeah, Two okay. more years. So Andrew just did my 30th. Yeah. And we're talking, there was spits going on on the grill. Like it was proper chicken wings on the fire, you name it, salads, potatoes, I'm whatever you contact. want. Yeah. So I'll let you know about Andrew. So that's a huge plug for forgetting about him, but massive apologies to Andrew there, but they're huge. So, um, Massive, massive thanks again to our sponsors. But as I said, I've been wanting to get this guy on for a little while because he's uh, he's got a cool story. It's interesting. And I used to play footy. I didn't used to actually play much. I was on the bench. But the boys played footy against your brother a lot, uh, Marcus, which is funny. So we sort of reconnect again. Dingley boy. Yeah. Uh, I was Murrumbeater boy. Yeah. Did you ever play against Murrumbeater? Yeah, I did. Yeah, juniors. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. So, so it would have been, what, Seth McGraw and those boys? Did you know any of those guys? I reckon they might have been a year older. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that, 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 that was the Murrumbina Footy Factory, which I we all- Jack, Jack Hanley, maybe? Yeah, Jack, right? yeah, yeah, Chop, Jackie well, Hanley. Chop, yeah. Top's been on here. Oh, has he? Oh, I actually did say that. He's yeah. actually coming back on because yeah. he's, he's doing this crazy, crazy- He's actually going to be hopefully coming on- in next week or the week after because he's doing something absolutely ridiculous. Mate, he's so impressive. At the yeah, that guy is just crazy, man. Yeah. So he, he eats me for breakfast with uh, his run. So um, <laughs> it's crazy. But, man, I've been wanting to get you on because obviously you you uh, have had a tumultuous journey, ups and down, ups and down. You've done a few different things. But now you're probably found yourself, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, mate. It's it's It has been wild, mate. Like, you don't – I always get asked the question, like, if, if I wish my career went differently. But, like, I think where I'm at in life now, like, you don't – you never actually know what the consequences of your, of your bad yeah. fortune or good fortune is going to be at the time. I mean, going through my career, early days, injuries, sort of the roller coaster of footy, like it's easy to get sucked into the why me and thinking of the negatives and, and you do at the time, but looking back now, it's like, it's probably- Set you up for you are. Yeah, mate. Like it's, it's, and it's, and it's built, it's probably just built me as a person and the resilience and the sort of like the worldly view that I have of, of the world now. And, um, yeah, I think sort of the experiences that I've gone through have sort of set me up until now. So, 100%. yeah, mate, it's uh, where I found myself, and I'm sure we'll touch into it. But, um, yeah, no, it's exciting. Life's good. I love almost um, these post uh, – I'm a sports nut, as you are as well, and we all are. Um, Brain and producer is probably the biggest. But I reckon um, I love these post-footy stories more than the actual footy stories themselves because, for me, I find it really intriguing someone that – obviously, you come out of a routine pace and almost institutionalized system of training and the rigors and then injuries and whatever. And but then you come out and you're doing something so cool the way that you are now and, and with with obviously the breath house house is that what I'm saying yep, right house, yeah good yep, yep. um so talk to me earlier on obviously you, you get drafted and everything like that that's all real, really well and good are you uh and, and you go to Collingwood as well so you, you you've arguably gone to the biggest club in the land you've stayed in Melbourne because from D- you live in Dingley growing up yeah grew up till yeah grew up in Dingley till I was about 22 21 yeah amazing so then you go to Dingley and then fortunately enough you go to the closest club to your place, being St Kilda yeah. as well traded. Um, was there much differences between those two clubs? Yeah, massively. I mean, back then, I think obviously Collingwood were at the, I think it was the Holden Centre when I was back there and yeah. then going to St Kilda where we were down in Seaford at oh, the so time. So you to Seaford? Yeah, I was, I was Seaford for a, a year and a bit yeah, um, okay. and then Moorabbin for, for a couple of years. But yeah, mate, like big differences. I mean, like like you said, Collingwood's the biggest, well, is the biggest club in in. Yeah. Melbourne especially, but I think West Coast is you know, yeah, crazy, one man. of the biggest ones. But yeah, but I mean, everyone knows Collingwood is the biggest. So 
going from there, even the fan, like the fan base, the membership base, the facilities, the um, just the money and, and the financials that are, are getting thrown around in those sort of clubs, um, completely different to obviously St Kilda where it's a bit more of a, you know, it's it, – they're obviously not as financially um, uh, well off as as Collingwood or a bigger club, so you definitely notice those things. But mate, like I mean, if you got a footy over, you got a meeting room, you got a gym. Like there's yeah. there's no real excuses. So I think you can get tied up in all that sort of stuff. But I mean, you look back to like 2010, like St Kil- like St Kilda have had some had some great success in in the recent decades. Obviously not winning the the grand final, but there's been some periods where they've been right at the top and right at the pointy end. So yeah, man, like a. You, you look at the differences, but again, like you sort of got to look at, I always looked at how grateful I was to be playing AFL footy. Yeah. And I mean, starting at Collingwood and then so getting- who, Is that Bucks? Yeah, yeah I was Bucks. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Bucks for two years. I loved Bucks. Um, and, and the whole playing group, I mean, I think back when I got drafted, like there was still like Trav Cloak running around, yeah, wow. Day, Day Beam, Swanee. Sharon um, William? Nah, I just missed him. Yeah, okay. Just missed. Dubs. I would have loved a night out on the sandwich. Yeah, I don't know why. I think it was like that whole rat pack. So I just <laughs> missed like Dids, missed Benny Johnson, but he was around the club quite a bit working. Um, Dale Thomas just left. Yeah, Heath a, Shaw just left. Oh, that's an, um, that's a, I took I took Heath Shaw's number thirty nine when yeah, I came you, in. Yeah, that's right. You yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. So and then security, you took ten. I took ten. Yeah. yeah. So ten was who was that? Like, Stephen Baker. Stephen Baker. Yeah. Um, and now it's and with Cheeto Owens. Is that right? Mitch Owens. Yeah. So yeah. so it was yeah Steve Baker. Dan Markworth, who I think I had for about yeah. four years, didn't okay. play though. Myself, um, Dan Hannabury, and now Machito Owens. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Machito's trying to, yeah. And he's, doing a, and he's had a good start. Mate, he's a star. He's, he's had a, a really star. good start to the year. Uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really good mate to his older brother, Kai. And th- sort of through my journey in, in sports management, which I went into after, after AFL, which we'll touch on, I watched Mitch heaps growing up. Yeah. I loved him. Um, I was spewing I didn't sign him, but mate, he's been a jet and I love him. Like his mentality, his character, the way he plays, like he's going to be a jet. So I reckon, I, I reckon, um, just off topic, St Kilda's young brigade, obviously take apart Dave, Nick Dacos, who's a star and a freak in his own right. Yeah. But like, um, uh, they signed another guy other than Mitch Owens, um, Tamaniti. Yes. And I think Philip who as well. Yes. Um, like good young, like super good young players. And considering that they're doing, they're playing actually good kicking goals in a, their first year or second year, whatever it is, it's pretty cool, mate. It's it, it's crazy. It's crazy to see how quickly these kids come on now. Like you look at Dave, you look at Will Ashcroft, you look at Harry Sheasel. Like yeah, these wow. kids are like genuine stars, first and second years. Yeah. Like it's it's nuts how much the programs like like leading up. Like even when I went back, it was the Tac Cup. Now it's the NAB League. Like just how professional those programs are now, and just also how accommodating the AFL clubs are to the newer players. Like. N- I think probably back in the day, you had to earn your stripes a little bit with the, with the playing group and sort of just, you know, learn and grow and grow. But now it's like these kids are ready to play. The clubs embrace them. The coaches embrace them. You let them play to their strengths. Like you watch Dakes and Sheasel play yeah, and stuff, great. mate, they play with so much freedom. They've got so much confidence. And it's sort of just like, it is a testament to the whole, so sort of the under 18s and, and, you know, program, but also like the clubs now, they're it's, so- It's such a good system. Mate, it's amazing. So yeah, these kids are, are coming in like ready to go and it's bloody exciting. It's the feeder system that's sort of like, I mean, you can make an argument just off topic with footy, like that Dakes and Cheezel both could have been an All-Australian team off the halfback flank or wing or wherever they wanted to put them, really. Yeah. I mean, they're both freaks. Yeah. But um, obviously, you know, yourself, like you go to, it's, it's just, I mean, well, one, you stay in Melbourne, so you're close to family. Two, you literally, you get tra- traded from Colin with the biggest club in land to the, to the, I I guess the if you're living in Dingley Seaf, it's going to be close as well. So you're 10, 15 minutes up yeah. the road, like it's crazy. Um, when footy stops, because I know obviously you, you're, I'm going to say you're a persistent bastard. Yeah, in a good way. Hard to learn. Yeah. I love that. Like yeah. I love that. You just don't back down. Like you have just tried everything um, and thrown the kitchen sink of it. Like for me, I'm always going to be biased, of course, because we're mates. And I'm going to say to you that Gold Coast should have taken you. Yeah. Um, but that's me. But I know you don't live in uh, what could have been because you're doing amazing things now. Um, how close did it really come to to going on that third list? Oh, mate, it was it was extremely close. I mean, when I. When you're talking about the third list. So when I finished at St Kilda. So how long ago are we talking then? St. Kilda? This is twenty eighteen when yeah, I got okay. delisted from St Kilda. Um obviously managers working overtime. So Paul Connor's my manager. I think we we did have some interest from Gold Coast then. A few other clubs didn't happen. Went back and played Frankston for three years. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. Yeah, played Frankston for three years, had a couple of really good seasons. Um sort of mid season draft twenty eleven. Oh no, not twenty eleven. Twenty twenty one. Um thick of COVID. 
yeah, COVID. Was it COVID? Maybe the year after. But Richmond was really interested mid-season draft. Um, and it's a funny story. That's funny, actually, because I texted Geish yeah. and said, mate, mate, as a Richmond fan, I'm like, mate, make sure they take it's him. It's such <laughs> a funny story. So, like, I, I'd started working with Connor Sports, so as a, as a play manager, um, and I'd, my mind had completely switched from wanting to play AFL football to, like, all right, how can I make the, be the best manager I can? Was just playing Frankston for fun in the end. Um, has started the year really well. Um, playing for fun and getting 43 disposals. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> bro, it's funny. Like, I don't know if it was just the freedom of not like caring, not caring, but like I, I, I was fully invested in making, like making Frankston the best club it can be, but also trying to be the best manager it can be. I wasn't even thinking about playing AFL, AFL again. Yeah. But it sort of got, I think I had the first, first five or six rounds, I was averaging something like 41 touch. Yeah, like, I was going nuts. Yeah. Um, and then, I think Richmond, so Blair Hartley rang Paul, my manager, and was like, hey, would Fraser consider playing again? And Paul rings me and he goes, like, what, what, are you, what are you thinking? Like, would you go around again? And I was like, yeah. Like, oh, I'd actually, it actually probably took me a little bit to get my head around it because I'm like, far out, like mid-season draft. I'm, I think I was 26 at the time, 27. I'm like, I might only have a couple of years left. I'll be on a rookie deal. I'd have to quit my job as a manager because obviously you can't be a player manager yeah. and a player at the same time. So... Sort of came around and I'm like, yep, yeah, like, let's do it. Um, and he goes, okay, like he's one of the the couple in the mix that we're looking at taking. Um, and yeah, I think on the day of the draft, we thought they were going to take, um, who's the kid? Sam Durham, who yep. went to Essendon. Yep. He was in Richmond's VFL at the time. And we're like, okay, like if if Sam Durham can That's go- That's right, to, they did take you. Yeah, yes. they go, we go, if Sam Durham can go to Essendon at nine- that means I'll go to Richmond at 10. So me and Geisha are like, oh, like let's let's try and plant a seed with um Adrian Dodoro, who had pick nine. And we're like, mate, can you just take Sam Durham like yeah. we, so I can get to Richmond? And he goes, nah, mate, Sam Durham, nah, he's a hack. I don't, I don't like him. And we're like, okay, yeah, no, whatever. But Dodoro always plays games. Anyway, on draft night, I'm at Geisha's house. It's just me and Geisha. We're watching it on the laptop. And he goes, pick nine, Essendon takes Sam Durham. Yeah. And me and Geisha are like, mate, it's going to happen. I'm going to go pick 10 to Richmond next minute. Richmond pick 10, they take Matt Parker and we're like, where the hell does that come from? Anyway, spoke to Blair after the draft and he goes, oh mate, our, our, we wanted Matt Parker and you were next. And so we completely read the situation wrong. And we, and so we basically like, if Matt Parker went at nine, I would have gone at 10, but I think it's just the way uh, uh, the draft so they thought that They thought Essendon was going to take Matt Parker. Yeah. And, yeah. Then you would have gone. and I would have gone at 10, but Matt, uh, Essendon ended up taking Sam Durham. What does that do you mentally though? Like- Oh, th- oh, mate, oh, it was, it's funny because I, I had a good, not a backup, but like I was, I was a player manager and I was not established at the time, but I, I was making a really good fist of it. So, I mean, we just had a laugh, laughed it off. Um, and I just went back and played VFL. Like, I mean, I was probably disappointed for 10 minutes, but then I was like, really? okay, okay. We'll, we'll rock up to work the next day, man, Geish. Like, and I loved my job. I loved being a manager. Um, great team, kind of sports, like they were just well, the best place to work. So yeah, like we just butted up, um, went back to work the next day and then sort of finished off the year and then the Gold Coast stuff came around. Gold Coast wanted me to come train for pre-season. That's for, the end of 21? Yeah, end of 21. Yeah, yeah, end of 21. So went up to the Gold Coast, trained whole pre-season. Um, it was me, James Cheetahs and two, uh, two of their academy kids, I reckon. Yeah, so okay. Morgan Ferris and one other kid. Um, and for one it, spot. For one spot, yeah. So... I got down to the last, basically the last training session before they have to make the call on who they're going to take. Um, and yeah, they ended up taking James Cheetahs. Um, yeah. And then I, I th- that that was a little bit like devastating. Yeah, that one. put so much time into I put into so much it. time into it. I mean. I paid your life. I paid my, w- was living in the Gold Coast at the time. Um, so yeah, that, that happened. I was disappointed. Um, and then literally the same day, Adelaide called. So Justin Reed called me and said, hey, come, you know, be our leadership player for our Sandful list, train full-time with the AFL squad, come live in Adelaide. Um, and, you know, th- there might be an opportunity to mid-season draft when it comes up. So basically he said, yep. So I picked up my life again, drove, go Adelaide. Sh- drove straight, straight from um, <laughs> straight from Gold Coast. You've to- driven from Gold Coast nah, to Adelaide? No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. So I, I flew from Gold Coast to Adelaide, <laughs> left all my stuff in the Gold Coast, basically had to book removalists and get my car and a truck to come over. But I went straight away to Adelaide and then I was, yeah, just – from then on living in Adelaide. So how long were you there for? I was there for, oh, I would have been almost like Feb till about August. Oh, so, wow. So yeah, you did good, a pro- yeah, I did most of the season. Yeah. But w- the last preseason game, we had a practice match against Port Adelaide. I did my AC joint in my shoulder. So I missed quite a few. So I was playing ha- injured most of the year. 
I wasn't going to get picked up in the mid-season draft. Um, so I made the call to come back to Melbourne. So yeah, came back, played a couple of games with Frankston. Now I'm playing at Dingley. So. And what are you doing work-wise when you're in Adelaide? I was still managing. Yeah, okay. I was still managing. So I had a few players um, like Josh Rochelle, Jake Saligo. Um, they were the main two. Then at Port Adelaide, I had a few. Like So like I was working with Josh Sin, yep. Dante Byzantini, one of their rucks. Um, so yeah, I had a few players over there. I mean, it was, that was good for me. Like, I mean, it was good for our company because I was still- So you were like the Adelaide representative basically, for yeah. CSM. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So it was, it was really cool. So- I love my time in Adelaide and Gold Coast. Met and, some great people. And Geish and Paul are like, mate, just follow your dream. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's that, awesome. Like, they were like, I can't thank them enough for like basically like letting me go like do this and, and work at the same time. And obviously I wasn't in the office down here, but I was still working over there. And yeah, mate, like it was, um, it was we, funny. We had Geish on here. Yeah. Um, I, I love, I just love Geese. Man, and I spoke he? to him last night on the phone on the way in. And he's like, man, I'm on the train. So I'm like, mate, cool. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just like, just letting you know, mate. I'm like, yeah, that's all good. Yeah, I'm yeah, just chatting yeah. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he's I love man. him. I love that bloke. So, um, I, and I've actually never met Paul, funnily enough. But, yeah, um, really? um, Tom will come, but yeah. uh, I should get him on the pod. Yeah, he's got yeah, some stories. Yeah, that mate. guy will have plenty. I'd yeah. imagine. I've heard a few. Uh, I think it was with Tommy Sheridan. He was on this one, and he, and he did pull. Yeah. Um, and mate, the guy's a character. I mate, like it. He, he's he's got the big salmon shirt going on and everything mate, like the that. Salmon shirt. <laughs> the, he has a pink bandana that he wears all the time. It's awesome. Man. It's, it's it, awesome, mate. It? It's, it's pretty funny, and and it's cool just to chat to different people. Like, so you go to Adelaide and obviously Gold Coast and everything like that. What made you? Before that, like, how did the AFL player management stuff come up? So basically, I would, I'd say midway through my last year at St Kilda, 2018, Paul Connor's my manager. So I'd, I'd had hamstring, so I started 2018, had hamstring surgery. Um, then I came back. You went to, to Germany? I did go to Germany twice, paid yeah. my own way, cost me a bomb. For Got, both times? Yeah, no, nah, first, uh, second time I paid. Wow. First time was the club, but- yeah, that, that was, I mean, like, I, I don't know if it was, it was that, that helped the most, but I was doing so much stuff. Like I, in my mind, I'm like, if this helps one or 2%, like I'm doing it. Yeah, like exactly. I literally didn't want to finish and be like, I wish I did this. I wish I did that. It was like, nah, mate, like I'll spend anything. Like I, I just want to play footy. Um, so yeah, like then halfway through 2018, came back, played two games, did my AC joint, needed an operation, basically went to the surgeon and I was like, is there any way I can play because I was out of contract. So if I'd miss the season, I'm done yeah. anyway. So I'm like, mate, can I play out the season? He goes, yeah, like you can. It's not going to get any worse because you've completely ripped JC joint. Jab it up, strap it up and just see how you go. So I missed two weeks, played the rest of the season with a bunk shoulder. So I went from being an inside midfielder. I started playing on the wing. So yeah. I would take a bit. Oh, it wouldn't. It's not a, as a crash and bash. Um, so yeah, played on the wing and was still playing okay. Like playing well for Sandy. Um, ended up getting a game uh I think it was round twenty and round twenty one. I played, I debuted. Um, so yeah, that one that was that was crazy. Like it was, it was sort of like you just wait. Yeah, man. Like it wasn't a, it wasn't so much of a relief. It was more just like a maybe it was a bit of a relief as well. Yeah. But I was so excited. Like I was so ready to play that game. Like, like I think I'd, I was the second longest time from draft to debut wow. of all time. It was like something like 1,700, 1,800 days. Um, so yeah, like it was towards the end, mate. It was getting like a bit of a joke. I'm yeah. like, far out. Let's just get this game over and done with. Yeah, like, no. but it was it was good, man. Like, I think a oh, funny story. The week before, so so my defensive um, pressure isn't my strong suit. So I, I can find the pill easily. Yeah, but you and I both. that's always my knock. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly right. That's why he didn't get drafted, did he? <laughs> he would have got drafted. You if he, and I both, man. Um, so I think it was the week before. We we're playing Box Hill in the VFL for Sandy, um, and. Richo gets me in his room, so Alan Richardson, the coach, and goes, mate, I don't care about, you know, you're on the wing this week. I don't care about how many touches you get. I don't care about how many goals. I just want to see you tackle and chase and harass. And I'm like, yep, yeah, Richo, I've got this. And he goes, if you do all that, I'll play you next week against the dogs. And I'm like, fire out, let's go. Like, I'm keen. <laughs> so I went out that weekend and I'm like, I love playing against Box Hill. Don't know why. We just, I just matched up well against them. I came off the ground on the weekend and I was like, looked at the stats and it was like, you know, 38 touches, a couple of goals. <laughs> zero tackles. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh man, I'm, I've done myself here. And I swear, I was going through the vision. I'm like, I swear I got a few tackles. Anyway, nothing. Like Richard didn't talk. I think the next week, Richard didn't talk to me at all. And I was like, okay, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I might be in trouble here. Got to the Thursday or whatever. And we just had like a normal um, um, like players meeting on a Thursday. Arvo. Like we had it every week. 
And we walk in there and the whole club's in there, all the physios, all the admin staff and stuff. What's going on here? And we sit down. I actually thought Ben Patton was was debuting at the time. Yeah. So, because I'm like, it surely can't be me. Anyway, so Richo gets up there and goes, you know, it's going to be a special day on Saturday. We're excited. Like, Freezy, you're going to debut. All the boys got around me and I was like, and we had a little laugh after because he's like, he's like, I wanted, like, he's like, I was going to play anyway. I just wanted you to start thinking about your defensive stuff. So, no, nah, it was good, man. Like, and that was exciting. So that's so, how you get told. That's awesome. That's how I got told. So then um, it was, uh, it was the sat- it was it was a Friday night game. I debuted actually against the Dogs. Um, we just lost, um, and then the next week we played against Essendon, and yeah, got dropped after that. Got knocked out in the VFL the week after, then delisted. So, <laughs> what a pretty crazy oh, month. Man. And then the, the the player management stuff. I mean, that started those conversations. Oh, yeah, that's how that, yeah be, but I like it. we went on a tangent. Mark, but I like it, man. Yeah. Cool. This is the whole part of it. But the the, the management stuff. Did, did did you were you having those conversations while you were on the list towards the end? Yeah, yeah, I was. So Paul basically said, so Paul Connors basically said, mate, like if it doesn't work out towards the end of the year, I want I want to get you on working with me in the management space because I think that's awesome. I think what I think like Dill Buckley used to talk about this as well, like a footy PhD. Like you've like for someone of my age who's you know you've been drafted, you've been drafted high. You've been traded. You've been at two clubs. You've been injured. You've been yeah. You've done it all. You've I'm, done you've done it all. So that so that's if I can impart that sort of my experiences on, and I worked really close with, with like the 17 to 23 year old sort of players. So if I can sort of like guide them, it's almost like a player agent slash mentor, like being able to guide them. And, you know, if they have questions or like, it's not just about the footy stuff as well. Like I get the pressures of what you're going to cop outside of football. Like there's, it's going to be, you're going to have girls, you're going to be, you know, out at the, not at the nightclubs, you're going to be, yeah, there's pressure on like social media, that sort of stuff. So there's stuff that I've been through that I can help them with. So I think that's what Paul saw in me and it was like, that's a, a pretty valuable resource for the players. I reckon it's almost like, and I think I spoke about it on here, like I tried to do very early on the genuine, that's how I met like Damien Kafka that I had on last week. Like I tried to do the, the sports management stuff, but you know, it just didn't work out due to the fact you needed time, money. And I wasn't working at a CSM, yes, which is, yes. you know, I guess owns a lot of that space realistically. And, and there's a lot, there's a few of those bigger companies, but it's almost like the players that you're going to be dealing with. And I probably, I don't even, I said, I've never met Paul, but I completely understand why he would uh, get you involved in doing what you're doing because the footy training, the prep stuff they do at training, yep. but the mental side of the game, they'd almost do with you. Yes, yes. You yeah, know, that, that's right. Which and is, is great, which is almost, I'd almost say probably it's like that 80, 20% type yeah, of thing. Yep. Yeah, and, that, and that, that's the thing. Like I, I wasn't telling, I, I never tell my players how how to play the game. How to, yeah. Like you've got coaches for that. You've got your physio staff for that. You've got your gym staff for that. Like it, it's it's those little things like oh, – you'll go catch up for coffee and like, so half the time we wouldn't even talk about footy. We'd just okay. talk about life and oh, you're out on the weekend or this happened or oh, you got a girlfriend or like just like little things like that. Like I think the, that's what the boys especially liked about, I, I guess, ha- having someone of my age and that's been through that. that. you can relate to it Mate, you can, so you quickly. Can, yeah. You can talk shit. Like yeah. I, I'd, you know, I'd be out on the weekends and they'd be like, oh, Fraser, I want to go to this club. And like, I can, it's just like little things like yeah. that. Like you're almost – more like than a, a big, manager and a bigger brother. It's like your big brother, yeah. yeah. So they're the things, and and th- they can they know they can tell me stuff that they might not necessarily tell Paul. Like it's, it's, it's so relatable though to the age as well. Yeah, and it's well one from hypothetically someone does a someone's battling injuries. Well, you've been through that yeah. road, but two as well that you're at that age, so you know what's going on hypothetically. Now I don't know whether about Geesh or Paul, but um, you know I couldn't see them lining up at the Emerson maybe as much <laughs> yeah. as what they would me and you. Geesh maybe, but yeah. not Paul. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But you know, then they see the crowd and what's happening out yep. there and what's going on, whether it be you know drinks or drugs or yes, women or whatever yes. is going on in the in the world at the moment that they're being, you know, offered or whatever's yep, happening. So yep. you kind of get it. So I can see why you were in it. Because I was always wondering that. Um, and I remember bumping into you and Geese down here in the mall in Oakley. Yeah. Um, and I was like, fuck, Freezer makes it. It makes sense for Freezer to be doing it yeah. because he's been through a fair bit of crap to help him get through it. Yeah. No, that, that's exactly right. And and I love that sort of stuff. Like it. As a manager, you're like Paul didn't want a clone of him. Robbie Durazio didn't want a clone of him. Like we all sort of brought our own style, style and strengths to like the business, and we we're such a good team. Like we, the way that kind of sports managers, like managers a team. Like you're not, you might be managed under Robbie Durazio, but Robbie knows he doesn't know everything, and like. It, uh, I'll go for coffee with some of his players and just talk about life and whatever. And, you know, Robbie's really good at what he does. And, you know, we, we all sort of cross over. So I think that was a, that was a massive strength of Connor sports. And it's like, it's no like surprise why they're so good. That's right. So yeah. I also and, got my favorite player. 
Who? Toby Green. Yes. He's uh, everyone's favorite player, mate. mate. I just Fist like... Star. I just think that guy is just one of the best of all time. Yeah. No, he is. He, mate, he'd, he'd be in the top handful of players in the NFL. I just sure. reckon he's a goat. Yeah. Uh, not goat, but well, one of who are the a, a guy that can win a game off his own boot. Yeah. Yeah. Is him like Buddy Franklin in his prime? Yeah. Um, Martin in his prime. Yeah. Dustin, of course, I'm talking about. Um, Freezer in the Vif, in the Vif for the for the for the for the, for the Franks and Dolphins. The <laughs> for, the, for the Franks and Dolphins and me down at Murrumbina under nine. That's so, right, mate. That's right. Jeez, I can see some worries. Keyword under nines, mate. While I'm still thirty, Glory tell you what, it's you know. like me, I peaked at eighteen. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was peaked. all downhill from there. <laughs> oh, you know what's funny about me, Murrumbina? I used to say, so like, when we used to play a really good side, so St. Peter's or St. Uh, Paul's or Ajax, right? I would never get on the pitch. Yeah. Like, I'd probably get on for five minutes, and I used to get on. Like, I was so angry. Angry and annoyed, like with the, with the coach, right? With Pato back in the day, because I'm like, far out. I'm gonna tell the boys at school tomorrow. Like, yeah. and I paid five minutes. Yeah. And so I always just say to mum on the way home, I'm like, oh yeah, big. She's like, how'd you play, honey? Because mum wouldn't really watch it. I'm like, oh yeah, good, not bad. Like, probably should kick that goal. Never had a shot at goal, by the way. But yeah. anyway, and then I'd be like, oh, mum, um, I need a carb load. So can you take me past Maccas on the way home? Like, make myself feel better. Yeah. But then I'd have games against um like the lower teams that we'd like smash. So like Oakley Dragons or uh, Morty Bray back then. Yeah. And mate. I used to start in the middle. <laughs> yeah. With mate, wrecking balls. I'm not joking, mate. They used to call me the engine room at one stage because <laughs> against those lower teams, like, oh, mate, I was, I, I, I thought to myself, mate, oh, I'm so good at this game, right? <laughs> Chris Judd. Then I'd go on to camp against Ajax, hypothetically, and I wouldn't even get a touch. Yeah, so the, yeah. the coach would drag me. So um, incredible little fiddles to footy stories, which is cool. And that's what I like about, obviously, yourself because one, you're so humble, but two, uh, you don't forget, obviously, where, you're at, where you came from in Dingley. That's right. Um, mate. And Back I know you're a massive. Now, ma- ma- is Dingley Dingoes? Dingley Dingoes, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. They had the red and the. Red and something else, man. Yeah, it's like a weird red, colour. Yeah, red, uh, red, gold, red, black, and gold. Yeah, that's yeah, right. So, yeah. um, which is cool. So, talk to me through, um, which is one of the main parts that I wanted to talk to you about because I feel like right now there's such a big focus on, uh, I get fitness industries going huge, and I guess your stuff with the breath house as well. And um, an old guy, an old guy that does a lot of running, and he does the nasal breathing yes running and yes. all this type of stuff that he was posting about on instagram and i'm like what's this about and then i looked it up and i'm like okay i understand it. i couldn't do it because i get i sort of run a k on the tread yet and i'm done yeah. um but um talk to me through the breath house and what it is because i've seen you on tv in the ice cold baths and all this type of stuff like yeah. it's almost you're looking refreshed so right. it's it's funny it's it's probably towards the back end of last year would have been around october, september october time um where so one of my really good mates, Ella Pike, so she's she's known on Instagram and around as the breath boss. She's been facilitating breath work for years and years now. Um, and sort of towards the end of last year, um, me and my best mate, Charlie, so she's always like, come into a class, come to a class. And we're like, I'm like, nah, it's not for me. Like, yeah. I'm not, not into that sort of hippie stuff. She's like, no, you'll love it. Anyway, so we went down one Sunday afternoon to one of her classes and like afterwards I was like blown away at how – how something as simple as like conscious breathing, but like, it's like a, it's almost like guided meditation. So something as simple as that for an hour laying down in a yoga mat, like it was almost like a, it was almost like an out of body experience. Yeah. And I, and I, I left that room and I was like, I need to get into this stuff because it sort of stemmed from, so all through AFL and through my life, like you try and find things like you, everyone preaches the importance of mindfulness and meditation and looking after your mental health. But like, how do you do that? So we always tried to, you know, go on YouTube videos and do meditations or yeah. yoga, like whatever it is, try and do it on an app or try like, it just never, it never resonated with me. It never worked. And I'd always either get distracted or I'd just like give up. Like it wasn't, wasn't working for me, but this was the one time where I could actually Understand it. Understand it. And it's like, I switch, I completely switched off for an hour. Like you'd wake up and you're like, you felt, it felt like five minutes, but it was an hour. Anyway, so I'm like, this is like, this is it. Like, this is what you sort of, I've been looking for. And, and coming from my background in, in, like you said, AFL and, and sort of just, just high pressure jobs and environments. This is like literally like pulling the release valve on like your stress and your tension. And it sort of just resets you and, and, bring, and yeah. gives you an anchor to bring yourself back to. So like, oh, I was I jumped all into it, so I started going to see Ella quite a bit, just in her classes. Um, and then I said to Ella, "I'm like, this needs to get out to more people. It needs to become yeah. mainstream." Blokes like me and you and and you know, Footy World, like, had never even heard of it. Like, I'd never even heard of it before. Yeah. So I was like, "Let's let's try and make something as accessible, not restrict, not as scary as what there, there's obviously already breathwork practitioners and facilitators out there, but it's a lot." 
it's very hippie, woo-woo, left yeah. to center sort of stuff. Whereas I'm like, if you can make it not as scary, bring people in, make it really accessible, I reckon there's a real mark because people need this sort of stuff. So, yeah, man, like we started up the Breath House. We built a, a really big beach community. So we- yeah, I remember that. Yeah, 7 a.m.? 7 a.m. Yeah. It was actually, I think it was 6 a.m. Was it? Um, yeah. In summer, which is good because yeah. that's when the sun comes yeah, up and yeah, it's like 100%. it's beautiful over the beach. So we're like, okay, how do we- no, Ella had quite a big- client base already. She was already running classes herself, but I was, she basically suggested let's start a beach community. So I think it started just before Christmas. We had about, you know, 20 people on the beach, mostly friends. And then the next week it was about 50 people. people the week, growing. Mate, like by week four or five, we had 180 people on the beach. Like, and it was wild. Like we had ice bars and we had people doing breath work and meditation. We had yoga. We had, you know, you jump in the water for a dip. Like as the sun's rising at 6, 7 a.m. Yeah, mate, it was like amazing. I remember seeing it on the Today Show. Yeah, mate. Like that, yeah. that, it's funny how that happened. Like we were just down there doing a normal session and a guy who's actually a good mate of ours now, now Jesse, he was doing a cross for the for sunrise just based on the weather. And he comes over, he, I think he sort of recognized me and he goes like, what are you guys doing here? And I told him about what we're doing. And he's like, all right, I'm doing a live cross at eight o'clock. I'm going to come down and we're going to film you guys. And we're like, yep, sweet. So that's awesome. See how it happened. And then we, um, he did a big story on us a couple of months later. And, but yeah, so going back like breath house, like we started, um, the beach community, we didn't open the studio till, um, end of April. So we had like we had probably five months of, of the beach session. So every Saturday morning. Um, and that was just basically getting our name out there. Is that like a pretty much like for, I guess, for any business owners out there or people that are looking to, I don't know, run with an idea. Yep. Were you doing that like a free of charge? Free or? of charge. Yeah, well, Everything's free of charge. Yeah. So, but again, it's probably the best lead generation or marketing money yeah. we spent. I think it was, and we were bootstrapping at that time. So I was basically paying for everything up until we opened the studio. So I think, Man, I was paying like 500 bucks a week for ice pallets to get delivered down to the beach. Yeah, wow. um, the ice bars aren't cheap themselves. But again, man, like that money we spent and, and we still do it now. Like we just keep putting the money back into the business because yeah. we want to make like the experience the best possible thing for like our community and the people that like anyone that's, people that actually want to try it. That's all. it, mate. Yeah. Anyone that steps through the door at the breath house or comes to our beach sessions, like they're like they're why we do it. We don't do it for the money or anything else. It's like because we think at that like this should get be mainstream because it's so good for your mental health. It's so, it's so um, effective and like people need this sort of stuff. So we're like, we do this as like a, a like we just need to get it's this out give, there. It's a give back. A exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. So yeah, man. Like we just started doing that free of charge. People loved it. Um, and then once we opened the studio, we had you know thousands of people that have been down to the beach. They knew who we were and they just sort of came straight in and we've pretty much been pumping that capacity that's, from day one. So awesome, yeah, it's been very exciting. So it's yourself and Ella that are behind. Yes. Yeah, so house, me or? and Ella are, are both partners in the breath house and we've got, um, another three facilitators that help out. So Eliza, Hannah and Simon. So they all, they all facilitate like two of them are yin yoga instructors and other ones a breathwork instructor. So amazing. Yeah. And so they, have you had to do studies yourself with all this stuff? Yeah. Or? So I, I've got a few certifications. So oxygen advantage is probably the main one. That's wow. with a guy called Patrick McEwen. Um, and you get, that's that's a lot of the scientific side of, of breath work and, and, and why we do it. And, you know, there's ba basically the scientific side of it. And then there's another one called XPT, which is run by Laird Hamilton, who yeah. used to be a Ironman big wave surfer. He's very into like that holistic um, like space of, of wellness. So I've got, I've got XPT, I've got Oxygen Advantage. I'm going to go up and do uh, one called Survival Apnea, which is like a free diving sort of course where you right. learn – Basically, like, because because free divers and big wave surfers are the like they are massive on this sort of stuff because they have to be you have to be able to hold your breath under the water for to wait for a set to go over or if you're a free diver you need to dive fifty meters under the water yeah, exactly and keep yourself calm keep yourself centered hold your breath for like minutes and minutes and minutes so that's I, I love that sports specific side yeah. of it um, whether it's you know for, for performance but also like calming your mind, calming your nervous system, the mindfulness space. So it's such a big space right now. Yeah. Um, like I feel like uh, I'm, I'm a YouTube, I'm a, I'm a YouTube, I'm a YouTube and also a TikTok watcher, but I'm not a, I'm not a poster. Yes. If that makes sense. Yeah. But I love watching these TikToks, especially at night. Like, you know, it's a usual routine, have a flick. Same, um, I love TikTok. Yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. But you see all these different, it's such a big space right now, the, the meditation space and everyone's talking about it. Yeah. Um, like I, I'm actually a big, like I actually like meditation myself. Like I, you know, like you, I, I just do the Spotify. Yep. Um, sometimes just to just, 
zen out a bit yeah. and um and relax. So um, it's become a massive space, and everyone's starting to implement a bit more. It's like you know, I feel like it goes hand in hand with like your journaling and your um hundred percent all those types of things as well. Like uh, mental health space is amazing because of where it's at. Yeah. Um, not that this is a mental health platform or anything like that, but it's it's good that it's always always front of mind yep. for people. But yeah, this journaling and this meditation and you know all these self love stuff, which is great, but is there to really relax you with this world that's become crazy that we're all living in. hundred percent. So it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, and it's funny, like when you say like, there's obviously the journaling and the, the, um, you know, meditation, but like for, for guys, it's, you don't have to do, you don't have to do everything. You can find, you can pick and choose things that work for you. Like you might resonate really well with breath work and that, that becomes one of your anchors. Like that's like, okay, if I know life's getting hectic, like I can always come back to breath work. I can always go to a session or take 10 minutes out of your day to, like you said, jump on Spotify and do it. Or some people resonate really well with journaling. So they yeah. journal, but, and you can mix and match all different well, types of things. For you, yeah. Exactly. So we, we try to incorporate like, so Ella runs um, like workshops and, 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 like women's circles and stuff like that where, yeah, they get out the journals and they get out the crystals and they do breath work and the um, manifesting and that sort of stuff. But then you come to a weekly class with, where I might be there and it's like we're just basically meditating or yeah. zenning, zenning out for an hour. Like we, we cater to all types and we try to make it as accessible as possible. So, and 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 sort of not as scary as, as you know, like you might, like I, I definitely did. You look at the some of the other gurus and spiritual gurus and you're like, wow, that is way too much yeah, for me. Yeah, too much for me. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But it's like, if you see a guy like myself, I'm a footy player, I still, back, yeah. I still go have a beer. Like it's all about balance, but like this is one area that's really resonated with me. And I think we get a lot of, um, we get a lot of AFL players coming through now. We get a lot of, um, we've had like Olympic level boxes. We've had like, even last night we had a international DJ in last night. Like I won't, he's very well known, but That's so cool. yeah, man, like it's, and, and, these, and are, they, are these people like, I mean, are these people reaching out to you guys or how, how is it working? Half the time, like it's just organic. Like yeah, well, a, a lot of my, obviously I'm from the AFL industry. Like a lot of the guys, um, I think it's sort of, it sort of started with like Cody Waitman. So he's very like indie, oh, yeah, like yeah. He, he loves, he loves all this sort of stuff. So he, he used to come in like really early days and I'm really close with him. We went to Halebury, um, and yeah, just from around the traps and he, he came, then he brings another player and another yeah. player and then word sort of spreads and like, man, we had anywhere from like 30 to 40 AFL boys That's coming awesome, through man. a week, um, which is awesome to see. And awesome. and then, yeah, like we get just uh, w- like we've grown so much basically just through word of mouth and our social media. Like yeah. we don't do any paid ads. We don't do any marketing. We really don't, we, we don't really push it on people. Like we're not very pushy people. Like we're here to provide a service and- like we welcome anyone can come in and it's, it's one of those things that you've got to, you come to do it when you're ready. Like, like I've had you know, mates reaching out be like, Oh, what, what's this you keep posting about? What's this? And I go, mate, like, you know, come in, I'll give you a free class. I like, come check it out. And they'd be like, yeah, no worries. I'll come in. And then like, once you do it once, like you get it, you go, okay. I'm- it's, it's funny. Cause obviously I've followed you cause we're mates, but yeah. two, I had a, there's a girl that I know that also started attending your classes, um, Nadia. Yeah, Nadia, Nadia Sophia. Yeah, she goes with yeah. Her on Instagram. Yep, yep. Um, she's like a like she's in, she's I think she's a consult consultant or counselor or something along yeah, those so lines. I think I was I was quite. I close could be very it. wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then I started seeing her post as well, and I'm yeah. like, okay, this is like funny because you know you've only got you know a thousand followers or whatever it is yep. on Instagram, and you start to see people post about it. Um, and and also this world's going in a way of all these cold showers. You know, I'm not saying it's that, but you know, I was actually talking about cold showers before with my with my mate because I yeah. said to him, I'm like, man, I'm like. He's like, oh man, it's cold today. I'm like, oh, what's wrong with you? The frail little bones getting old. And he's like, um, he's like, man, I, I, I had a cold shower this morning. Did you? I'm like, no, nah, man, stuff that I can't yeah. get a cold shower. But it was funny. We talked about a cold shower, yeah, because yep. everyone's talking about this new craze, which is a cold yep. shower. Yep. So, I think your space that you're going on, like, I can genuinely, and um, you probably notice it yourself, but you talking about this is probably as passionate as I've seen someone yeah. about their, um, their venture, yeah. which is amazing. Cause I, I love to see people do really well for themselves and for you, but you just look so passionate about what you're doing and but one, believe in the product, yeah. but two, like you can really tell the genuineness behind it, which is really cool to see Mate, considering what you've been through. It's like when I, when I made the switch from play management to, to starting breath house, the thing I loved most about management was like just helping players. Yeah. Like I, always loved like yeah helping my, my players find like like in their mental health or like find it an edge on the field or something like that like I just loved that sort of stuff and I was like okay like breath house that it's sort of just like magnifying that on a major level like yeah. I can help 
I, but it's like the general population. Like, mate, if you've got a set of lungs, like you, you benefit from breath work. So like, I love that side of it and, and helping people really like sparks, like really lights me up. And Al is the exact same. You like, tell, yeah. mate, we love it. So yeah, man, like the more people that come in, we love just seeing it get adopted. And, um, you can, you can, um, you can really, really tell like the, how passionate you are, which yeah. is cool to see. Cause as I said, you've got someone else on the opposite side of this and talking about what it is. And I've tried to do my own little research into, um, breath house and breath work. And I said, I, I started from this guy that was all about, cause as soon as I find something that someone's doing, yeah. I just want, I'm like that person. I just want to learn a bit more to find out what, what is this nasal breathing all of a sudden? Or what's yeah. this new technique? Um, uh, as to where it is. So you can see um, how it's going. So how does it actually work? For those that are listening right now, as in, um, let's say Dim, me, who I need to come and try a session um, and bring down a couple of mates of mine with me because I've got a couple of mates that are into those, yeah. like, into the, similar to me, like trying to do different things. How does it work for us? So um, is it a private session? Is it a group session? How does it work? So we, we do a, we do a few offerings. Like we have, so our, like our weekly classes. So we run, so there's three types of weekly classes. So I have one called LSD, which is like long, slow and deep. That's like meditative style. That's a, a lot of, like, so like you said, the nasal breathing, the nasal breathing is a really parasympathetic response in the body. So like, obviously when you're nasal breathing, you you it's basically like the rest and digest, the re relaxation techniques. So for an LSD, we've got one called release, which is a bit more sympathetic, a bit more like of a heightened response. You know, we call it release because it does, it, it's meant to release stored you know, emotions in your body and, and shift some things and, um, it's, that's a little bit more mouth breathing, a more intense, sympathetic sort of response in the body. Um, and you can go quite psychedelic. Like I get, I get quite psychedelic in those, um, those sessions. So, and then we're going to call connect, which is, a, a, it's probably like the medium. So it's a combination of LSD and release, but also you have a few, um, different connection exercises, whether it's connecting with other people in the class or connecting in, inwards with yourself. So, and that's, and, and our facilitators, um, run those sessions, um, at sort of how they choose. That's and awesome. yeah, man, it's exciting. So like there's weekly sessions we fit, we have 24 in a class. Okay. Um, we do pretty much every day we have like a six o'clock and a seven thirty session, but then also Ella, um, runs one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, if you want a bit more of like a, a understanding, understanding, yeah, like m more of a, a personalized sort of, yeah. um, experience. So and then you'd have your corporate stuff as well. Then I we imagine. have a lot of, we do a lot of corporate stuff. So uh, well, corporate's really starting to pick up now. Like yeah. we do, we do a fair few of them, like probably like five or six per week, um, corporate sessions, but, and it's amazing to see companies starting to really like, you know, invest in this area of Apes. their employee. Mate, it's it's their number one like the company's number one assets is their employees, right? And and if you can keep your employees invested, their mental health up, productivity productivity up, like it's it's the it's the best money you'll ever spend and the best experience you'll ever have for your employees. So we're starting to see a lot um in that sort of stuff and, and companies keep coming back. Like we we've got a few that, you know, we do pretty regularly and that's awesome. They really enjoy it. So yeah, man, there's there's one on one sessions. There's those sessions we still do the Saturday dips, which is always free, which that, which yeah. will start back up in summer. Um but yeah. So like, you're still doing the Saturdays or just summer this is Saturdays? Just in summer and yeah, Saturday. Amazing. So we'll start one up. Uh we'll start back up probably around October, November. Yeah, amazing. Um so yeah, about a month, month and a half. But we've got a we've got a little special one off for Are You OK Day next Thursday morning. So that's awesome. We've got a little fundraiser. So us, um, a company called Volley, which is a, a volunteering platform. Um, Louis Phillips, who's yep. a runner, so he's gonna do a little fun run. Um and one thirty two cafe on Chapel Street are gonna be giving out free coffees. So yep. Gab. Gab, big Gab, hey, hey, Gab, big mate. Gab, man. He's a man. Big we, Gab. We yep. love him. So yeah, they're, they're, that's awesome. And they they're, they're they're amazing to us. Like, and we, we love collaborating with them and, and they're, they're like the same thing, like be on community. They've got such a great community and they're great people. So yeah. like we yeah. love working with them. So yeah, man, like that's, that, that's the business. And I sort of thought the way, so like in my mind you go, okay, like, so F45 and like these group fitness classes where it's like really convenient. It's like, if you want to go work out and you're not used to working out or you don't know, really know what to do, you rock up, you're it's all laid out for you there, the equipment. You've got a you know, expert, like a guided instructor that runs you through the session and you in 45 minutes to an hour, you're out yeah. and you've done, you've ticked the box, you've done it. So I thought like, what, why, like, what's the biggest barrier for not like sort of doing mindfulness or a meditation practice or breathwork practice? It's like, okay, like sitting at home, you're on YouTube, you're trying to lay down. You don't know if you're doing it right. You don't know if, you know, you're actually meditating, your mind's elsewhere, your phone's ringing, you've got all these external distractions. It's like, why can't, why don't we just build a place like the breath house, which 
you go there, you do an hour of like really deep, intensive meditation and you leave and you've ticked your mindfulness box. You don't have to think about it. Um, so your, f- your physical fitness. Yeah. That's it, man. Like, so that's, that, that's why everyone loves it. Cause it's like, it's so easy and convenient and it's literally like on another level. Like we're, it's, mate, it's like meditation on steroids. Like you've got to build the community as well. That's right. What you do, you become a community within the community. Yep. And the best part about it is, is that you're, you're so, um, well, your location's amazing because it's so central. Like yeah. you're, you're in Windsor, which is great. Cause we it's, love our spot, yeah. it's, um, Windsor for those that don't know is Paran. Yes. That way. So Chapel Street, Chapel Street, South yeah. Yarra, all those types of things. So you're in a central locale where you're getting both sides of Melbourne, you know, the, the North, the South, the East, the West and everything like that. Yep. So you're central as, which is, probably perfect in itself yeah um which which is great as well but do you reckon uh you're probably the happiest you've been in years with what you're doing at the moment yeah i think so yeah. like i i i think this is like i love i love like I love building things. I love business. I love the business side of stuff. Yeah. So I do, so Ella and the girls do a lot of like the facilitating hands-on stuff. Like I do a lot of like the back-end business stuff, like big, like bigger picture type things. So at the moment, how like we grow it. Exactly. So how can we get this to more people? How can we get more eyeballs? Can we get online? Are we going to open up new spaces? So there's all these things that are like happening really quickly. So I love that sort of stuff. It lights a fire in me. I literally, like, it's funny, like uh, I sort of quit a nine to five with Connor Sports to work like a pump. to work 24 seven for myself, yeah. but I love it. Like it's, yeah. it's nuts. So I think that's, um, that's what sort of, uh, lit a fire in me. I think the, the, the point I touched on before is the helping people. Like we provide a service that is so important and it's so effective and people leave and we get, we get messages every day saying, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just thanking yeah. us for, for like literally like existing and being there and providing this to people. So things like that really light me up. Um, working with really good people, like like-minded people, like, so Ella, my best mate, Charlie, who's um, sort of starting up his own business called Volley, which is going live in six months. Folks like Gab, who are 132, and like just people like that, which I'm in a really good network at the moment. Um, that helped you grow. Helped me grow. And, and mate, that that's, like, it's probably the biggest business hack of all time is like surrounding yourself with like-minded people doing like with the same sort of like big picture goals and ambitions as yourself and, and, and like supportive people as well, because I think that that basically like straps a rocket to you and you, and you go nuts. Like, like we've got people that want to help us. Like I've met some, like some of my mentors are like, you know, big, big dogs in in their fields and and that sort of stuff. But I would have never met them if I hadn't been connected through this person and that person, mate, like your net, your network is probably like your number one, biggest thing and and you'd know like through your stuff like it's yeah that, that that'd be my um biggest sort of tip in going a business and your own like this is my first sort of business that i've owned myself and obviously it's yeah, uh, but you're chucking the kitchen sink out exactly mate and, and, awesome. and how quick it's happened is like we've had to learn a lot on the fly and like we've made mistakes we've thrown darts at the dartboard some haven't hit some have had a bullseye like it's and just mate, been you're gonna miss more than you take exactly mate exactly and it's it's amazing. It's it's really fun to have such a fun business partner. Like Ella's amazing. Like we have a lot of fun. Um, like we, we we like we take our business seriously, of, right. of course. But yeah, of course. But man, gotta- we have we have so much fun, and 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 that that rubs off on I think our community as well. And I think that's why people sort of gravitate towards. Yeah, man. That's why people gravitate towards 100%. Breath House so much because it's like uh, I'm not. I'm like we're not monks. Like we don't live. Like I still go have a beer on the weekend with my yeah. mates. I still play footy. I don't, you know, I'm still a normal bloke, but there's these things that you can add into your life. Like you don't need to go, you know, live like a monk. Going a hermit, yeah. Exactly, mate. You don't need to live like a monk, but it's, it's like- It's funny, yeah. Like I was talking about it just um, before. Uh, so I'm really big on once a week. Yep. Um, just once a week. And if I can fit in two, even better. But once a week having coffee with someone that I don't know. Yeah, that's great. So it's really weird. Like, as in like, say it's someone you've been following on Instagram for a while and you see that they're doing great things. It's like, hey, mate, do you want to catch up for a coffee? Um, If it's a client, an old client that I haven't seen in ages, just an excuse to buy him a coffee, yeah. really. Um, But, or even like LinkedIn is great as well and picking people's brains in different industries. Like, so I'm massive on it. Um, And it's so many people don't do it. Like, I, I just don't... Um, I, I think there's a synergy always to something yes. like that, that'll connect and it doesn't need necessarily um, connect today, but it might connect in a year or two years. Without you don't know, but one day it's going to connect. Yep. Um, I, I just find that for young 
people, not that I'm a business entrepreneur by any means, no needs. Like this is humble client like you with Breath House is the first thing I've ever done. Yeah. But man, people don't do it enough. Like Mate, they do I, not reach out enough. I agree. hundred percent, hundred percent. Like that, and that's probably a really good, like actionable thing. Like get a coffee with one person. Um, because you know, th- they might not be able to help you, but they know someone that's that can right. help you. And like you said, it might not come around now, but in two years time, it might click to them and they go, Oh, I know this guy. Or you've just kept a connection with them. And like, it all comes back around. It all comes back around. You never know who you're going to meet. Like I- I've met some amazing people, even in just the last 12 months that I never thought I'd ever meet. And it's been connected through one, two degrees of separation through someone and someone. And you've, it's funny. Then man. you're getting a coffee with, you know, some big dog and they're helping you how to do something. So it's funny. Like my, my immediate, like the way that my brain, brain sort of thinks is like, you got the breath house. Amazing. My thing is go to Vula who does our HR and be like, Hey Vula, check out the breath house. Yeah. I reckon our four officers could benefit from, um, having like a, a corporate session and seeing how it goes. Cause you know, um, like that's, and then in my way, I'm like, all right, man, I can maybe help this guy. Yeah. And then whoever stays on, stays on. Whoever doesn't, at least they tried it. Yeah. Um, like that's the way my brain thinks as to like how I can help this guy coming yep. on. Um, so man, I genuinely, you seem so passionate about this, which is awesome. And, uh, you believe in it, which is even great. And I, and I will genuinely come down for a session. Man, um, have we'll have to maybe like, get it filmed or something, man. Cause I reckon it'd be one of the funniest sessions I've yeah, ever done in my life. Yeah, without a doubt. Man. We'll like, start posting like, on TikTok. Mate, it's like- you put yeah, your first TikTok up. Mate, you know what's funny? Yeah, I reckon it'll just be funny, man. Like knowing me, I'll snore or something. Like I'll fall asleep. Fuck. Like it'll be, it'll be some session like that, man. So- I say that, man. I reckon the first- First few sessions I went, I had a, like a big Saturday night the night before, and then I went into a Sunday session with Ella, like a, a breathwork session. And I reckon like two rounds in or like 20 minutes in, I was like snoring and Ella, because I was just so mate, tired. I'm, Ella comes over like kicks me. She's like, shut up. Like, mate, I'm so bad at doing things for the first time. Like yeah. last week, we went and played bingo with a few friends at a bingo hall, <laughs> right? Genuine story. And I literally go to them um, far out. I go, how embarrassing would it be for, like there's 250 people there. Yeah. Um, I'm one of the youngest there as well. Out, and I'm like, how embarrassing would it be to call out bingo and you don't have bingo? And they're like, yeah, you're right, actually. Anyway, I was convinced I had bingo. So out of nowhere, I've gone last Friday and I've screamed on the top of my lungs, I go, bingo, <laughs> right? As I look down, I know it's number 33 is not crossed. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry because I'm so embarrassed right now. So I go, false alarm, sorry, false alarm. And generally, you've got to start, off, start over again. Yep. I'm like, oh, man, I feel like an idiot here. So anyway, going back tonight for bingo. Because every Friday night now is bingo night. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, when I do things for the first time, there's always something funny that just accompanies <laughs> yeah. it. Like, mate, you, so I reckon we're going to do something, man. We always like to finish on, that, on the humble three, which I wanted to ask you. If you weren't doing what you were doing now, hypothetically, what would you be doing and why? Great question. Great question. Um, I'd probably still be in play management. Yeah, because I could yeah. see you also dominating that. Would you reckon you – and off topic of that question, would you ever get back into it? Uh, great question again. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I loved it. It's a very full on industry. It's yeah. very, you've got to be on 24 seven. You've yeah. got to, like, I, I loved it. Um, and I'd, I'd probably, I'd, yeah, I'd probably go back in order yeah, okay. to be honest. Yeah. Um, if you could own a billboard, what would it say and why? And where's your billboard actually? Great question. There's a big billboard in chat on Chapel Street corner, of Chapel and Turak that, yeah. It's um, it's on the Como Center. Yeah, I always walk yes, past it. I'm yes, like, yes, yes. I'm like, I want to get the breath house on there. Yeah. Um, it'd, it'd, it'd have something to do with the breath house, I reckon. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know exactly what the tagline will be, but I know, I know, I walk past it every day, and I want to get on that. Don't breathe through your nose, breathe through. Exactly, you. mate. <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd probably say, I'd, I'd probably say, look up <laughs> off your phone while you're walking and take a deep breath. <laughs> and I love it, mate. And one of the last ones, mate, which is always one we like to finish on is, um, we've never really spoken about, uh, we've spoken about Nathan Freeman the person, but uh, who is one of the inspirations behind Nathan Freeman? Because uh, with your resilience and everything that you do. Oh, it's a good question, mate. It's a good question. Um, who who is an inspiration of mine? It's and it could be someone from the from the um from like your current industry, hypothetically. Yeah. Um, who's an inspiration of mine? There's a guy. He runs a, a breathwork studio in LA. His name's oh, it's like Minaj Diaz or something. He, he owns a company called Open. Okay. And they 
and he is the, the exact vibe that I love from like Aaron's a breathwork studio, but he is similar to me. Like he's funny, he's cheeky, like yeah. he's not he's not the real spiritual woo woo type of guy. Good looking, it, or? Uh, I think he's Sri Lankan or he's some sort of like from around that parts. But yeah, he's a good looking dude. Um, and so I was just saying about and, whether you were going to put good looking in your part of your own. Whatever. Oh, I don't know about that, dude. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm not I'm not quite on your your <laughs> level, but. It. But uh, you can always polish a turd. So, <laughs> like um, nah, but he, he's probably one that in the in the breathwork sort of business space that I look up to a little awesome. bit. Yeah, yeah, mate. I can't thank you enough. You're an absolute star. And I've been man. trying to do this for a while. I can't thank you enough, mate. And um, we're genuinely going to do a bit of a session there. Absolutely. We're speak to some of the guys at work as well and and try and get this out. Obviously, we'll. Uh, because I reckon it, with what you do and what you believe in and with the journey that you've had to continue to smile the way that you are, it's just awesome. And I know there's a lot worse out there, but, man, you've been belted around the head a couple of times when it comes to that freaking footy. That was so, nice. <laughs> Physically and literally. literally. And mentally. Yeah, and mentally. <laughs> and, mate, we'll have to get a coffee with Geish, I reckon. That, 100 that, That's going to happen because we love the Geish. But he's imagine, the hardest man to pin down, mate, Geish, though, so we'll say. Gonna, he reckons next week because I spoke to him last <laughs> night, so we'll see. Um, we'll see. But, uh, mate, a huge thank you for coming on and thanks for being a star to all our sponsors, Bonds of Snowballs, Gigi Hearing Kids, B a car and truck rentals, bar- barbecue brothers catering who are amazing, and lastly, body contour and laser clinic. So for anything that you might need laser wise as well, go and check them out. I probably need a bit of body contouring myself, so <laughs> I'll get down to the breath house. But a massive thank you to everyone. Continue to sc- subscribe, like, rate, and comment, and it's how we grow. Please share across to everyone and help amazing people like this man here get his story across, which is awesome, and help their business grow because that's exactly what this platform's about. So a massive thank you. See you next week.